so I am super excited. Today I'm here with Kevin Dunn at the Soapers Conference and I want to talk to you about super fat. So when people are first starting to make soap, they hear the word super fat and it's like this scary thing and what is super fat, you know, how does it work? And then you go to research what super fat is and there are so many different ways to add super fat to your soap. You did a great presentation this morning and so I was wondering if you could give us the short version of what you discovered in your findings because you are a professor of chemistry. He's actually studied this, not just Tara's opinion, <laughs> but you have actual scientific studies where you studied this. My first question is, is it better to put your super fat in at trace or before? So it's a good question and it's, a, it's one that I wouldn't have come up with the answer beforehand. It's something we had to test. Okay. So we took three different oil blends of oils that we could tell the difference between the two oils um, using uh, NMR spectroscopy. And so we made two logs of soap. One of the logs we added, the, we mixed the super fatting oil at trace, the other one we mixed it at the beginning. And then we analyzed by NMR spectroscopy to find out how much of the super fatting oil was left in the soap. And we discovered that it was exactly the same no matter whether we added the oil at trace or we added it to the bulk oil at the beginning. We did that for three different oil blends and we came up with the same answer each time. That it made no difference whether it was added at trace or whether it had been mixed into the oil at the beginning. We also looked at in the, le in the unsaponified or partially saponified oil, which of the two oils dominates. And the answer we found was, in all cases, it's the oil that saponifies slower that's left behind in the finished. So um, what would some of those oils be typically? So the ones that you would think about would be the ones that are unsaturated. Liquid oils saponify slower in general than solid fats. Um, things that have multiple uh, unsaturation, like uh, safflower oil saponifies slower than, um, than olive oil, and like the king of them all would be hemp oil, which saponifies very slowly. Um, those are going to be the oils that are preferentially left behind as partially saponified or unsaponified oil. The ones that react rapidly are all going to turn into soap no matter the order in which the oils were added together. Yeah. The exception to that is castor oil, which is a liquid oil, it's unsaturated. Castor oil is a very weird oil. It's got some kind of strange properties and it actually saponifies pretty quickly. So when we tried castor oil as a super fat in palm oil, the castor oil actually reacted more quickly than the palm oil and was less prevalent in the unsaponified portion that we extracted from the soap. So in hot, did you notice a difference between cold and hot process soap with the super fatty and in the hot process before the soap is cooked or after the soap was cooked? We didn't actually, we didn't look at hot process, but my, my feeling is in hot process, if you wanted to add your super fatting oil to a hot process soap after the cook, the sodium hydroxide is already used up mm -hmm. by that point. So you actually would wind up with the super and fat that you intended if you added after the cook in a hot process soap. And that's how I like to do it. I like to put my shea butter usually at the end because I feel like, well, the lye's already used up. It's just kind of a common sense thing yeah, for me. Yeah, it is. The lye's already used up, so this shea butter is gonna probably stay on your skin more than if you don't. So thank you very much for clearing that up because I know the whole trace before after thing you know it does kind of stress people out because if you're making a fancy soap yeah i make all of them but when i'm doing a fancy soap by the time i get to trace you know i'm thinking okay is it set up too much for me to pipe that yeah. kind of thing the I don't clock want... is ticking yeah. at that point so my general <laughs> advice is don't make yourself crazy yep do whatever you can before you the the as much as possible adding the lye to the oil should be the last thing you do. Yep. Unless there's some reason that you have to do something at trace, you'd like to minimize that. 
Uh, the other confusion people have is if they add any at trace, they think, oh, the, the soap is less alkaline now, so I can protect this delicate scent or, or super fat mm -hmm. from the lye. But at trace, the reaction's only like 5% complete. It's only 5% less alkaline than it was oh, okay. when you just mm -hmm. added the light of the oil. So um, the reaction is far from complete when you reach trace. There you go. Okay. So go check out Kevin's book, Scientific Soap Making, in the description below. Please give us a like, share, subscribe, visit us at livingonadime.com. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, you explaining that. It's my pleasure. We'll see you guys later. Bye.